my name is Lisa Elvin Staltari, and this is my channel, Have Roots, Will Travel. I am a genealogist and a passionate traveler. Most of my videos will be about travel or understanding various localities, but in this special series, I'm focusing on a subject that is near and dear to my heart, the story of the Fijiwa, or the King's Daughters. In this series, I'll be focusing on individual biographies so that we can really get to know as many of these amazing women as we can. Please let me know in the comments below if there is one feature one in particular you are interested in, and I'll try to move it to the front of the line. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the notifications alert so you'll know when I post new content. So with that being said, let's get to work. Let's have Let's explore the next Fijiwa, um, which is the third in this series. Let's explore a little bit about Le Fijiwa. I just want to make sure that you are alert to the fact that this was an entire program that they ran in between 1663 and 1671 or so. And in episode one, featuring Marie Ursel Arcula, I go into great lengths about the program and what, what it encompassed. I will also be featuring another video shortly in the next couple of weeks. I will be featuring a video that is exclusively uh, related to the actual program that the Fijiwa experienced. With that, let's get to number three in our series, and her name is Elisabeth Isabel Sally. She is actually my eight times great grandmother. Another one. Now, her early life, she was born around 1651 and in the parish of Saint Médard in the Faubourg Saint Marchaud section of Paris. This is found in the fifth arrondissement. Um, the Latin Quarter, uh, Fifth Arrondissement of Paris in the Latin Quarter. And she would have been baptized in the church that I'm featuring right here, that is present day. It actually dates from the 14th century. The Latin Quarter of Paris is an area on the 5th and the 6th arrondissement of Paris. It's situated on the left bank of the Seine, around the Sorbonne. Uh, the area gets its name from the Latin language, which was widely spoken in and around the university during the Middle Ages, after the 12th century philosopher Pierre Abdelard and his students took up residence. How's that for some sort of history lesson? So, with her father was a merchant ironmonger to the palace. Um, and her mother, Françoise Lupia, that is all we know of her. Now, sometime around 1670, she was about 19 when she set off for New France. Contrary to other Fijiwa, she was not an orphan, and her family was not living in poverty. She came from at least a middle-class family. When I looked at the ship's log, there was another young woman with the name of Sally, and her name was Madeleine Therese. Her father's name was Claude, and she lived in the exact location as Elizabeth Isabel. Could they have been cousins? I like to think so. There were over 150 Fijiwa who were on that ship. Can you imagine? As I perused the list, I also found Elizabeth Anne Lefebvre. Uh, Elizabeth Agnes No. 5, who we got to know in video two, another great-grandmother. How wonderful to think that Elizabeth Agnes and Elizabeth Isabel might, just might, have gotten to know one another on that long passage. They landed in Quebec City on July 31st, 1670. Elizabeth Isabel arrived with goods valued at over 200 pounds. Now, let's look at the groom she picked out. The groom was Jacques Marcotte, and he was born in um, October of 1644 in the arrondissement of Le Havre in Normandy. He was the son of Charles Marcotte and Jacqueline Boucher, and he was actually a master butcher. His brother Nicolas Marcotte also arrived in New France and married Martine Torre. So we have Jacques and Nicolas Marcotte, who were the originators of the Mar Marcotte family. Now we look at the marriage. 
So we have both the marriage contract and the church record. On the 9th of September, 1670, a marriage contract was drawn up at Trois-Rivières between Jacques Marcotte and Elisabeth Isabel. We also have a very long and descriptive marriage record uh, that lists all the information about their parents and where they were from, the witnesses who came, all of that. Now, where did they start? Jacques and Isabelle started out their married life in Trois-Rivières, but within a few years moved to the nearby Domburg, eventually to be known as Noville, when the seigneurie was purchased by Nicolas Dupont de Noville. Until 1679, they would go to Quebec City to have their children baptized, as there was no church established in Noville. By 1679, finally a church was built and the parish of pointe aux trembles was established, which is where the remaining children were baptized. Now you can see on this map where Noville is in comparison to Quebec City. And you can also see where Three Rivers is in relationship to Quebec City. So really, they went from um, kind of in between um, Quebec City, always along the river, if you will. And this this very large picture is the Basilica Notre Dame de Quebec, um, which again, of course, is still, you know, standing. And then we have L'Assomption Church in Trois-Rivières, where they were married. Now let's have a look at the family they created. They had 14 children, 11 of whom made it to adulthood. Their firstborn, Denis, died at 10 years of age. Their secondborn, Jacques, uh, married Louise Francoise Baudet, and they had nine children, seven of whom made it to adulthood. Louis died um, at age seven. Jean-Baptiste married Marie. Paquet, and they had six children, all of whom reached adulthood. Geneviève and Elisabeth married Henri Bellin, and together they had 13 children, at least 11 of whom reached adulthood. Marianne, who is my seven times great grandmother, married Francois de Navarre du Poirier, and they had 11 children, all of whom made it, can you believe it, to adulthood. Marguerite Elisabeth married Jacques Jacob Montalbon, and they had ten children, seven of, seven of whom made it to adulthood. Marie Ursel uh, married Francois Nau, and together they had thirteen children, twelve of whom made it to adulthood. We have Marie Madeleine. I have not been able to prove this descendancy. Guillaume only lived less than a month. Jean-François married marie Geneviève Morissette, and they had nine children, eight of whom made it to adulthood. Michel married first Marie-François Guignac, with whom he had four children, and then he remarried Marie-Louise Richard, with whom he had seven children. Jean married Marie-Anne Morissette, if you'll recall. Jean-François married um, a Morissette, a Geneviève. Jean married the sister in a double ceremony, where they had um, the two, the four, the four, the two couples, and um, and they had six children. Lastly, Henri married Marie Charlotte Ardy in 1727, but sadly Marie died in 1732, and they did not have children. I've not been able to establish if Henri had any other children, but that is. Where, um, where I was able to, to track it all down. Now, what's really interesting is that the Marquettes later on in their life um, settled in a place called Cap Santé. The name of the town means Cape Health. Cap Santé is on the northern bank of the St. Lawrence River, about 25 miles west of Quebec City. Legend has it that this community's name was coined when soldiers suffering from an unknown disease miraculously recovered from a cure discovered in the village. The first settlers arrived here around 1679, and in 1714, the village became an official parish. The house pictured above is the, I know it's impossible to believe, is the actual dwelling of Jacques and Elisabeth Isabelle Marcotte. This picture comes from the website, the Famille Marcotte, which is an amazing website. So it has been redone and redone, 
but that is still the, the structure. The later years, Jacques Marcotte died between 17, um, 17 and 1720. What I find, and Elisabeth, Elisabeth Sani died December 31st, 1722. What I find interesting in that this document states that she is 67 years old. That's interesting as we've only been told that she was born around 1651. This would push her birth year up and make her 15 when she comes to New France. Normally these documents, when there is some doubt, they would have said about 67 years whether Elizabeth Isabel herself shaved a few years off the end and told everyone she was younger than she was, or the document actually tells us the truth. We cannot know. The point, of course, is that you must read the documents as you can to glean whatever information you can get. She is buried at the Saint Famille Cemetery in Cap Saint in Cap Santé. And so ends another mini biography of these amazing king's daughters. We'll see you soon with another biography. Until then, au revoir.